We've covered a number of high profile hacks here on TFN and they're seeming to happen with more frequency. The targets vary widely. Celebrities, banks, government institutions, and even whole countries. And so do the levels of success. But the explanation is often the same. Hey, another DDoS attack. That's basically when a bunch of bots attack your site, resulting in an outage. Hacking with this method is basically a numbers game. In a future episode, we'll also tell you how to guard yourself against this type of attack. But what about hacks that could result in much worse consequences than, say, everyone seeing Scarlett Johansson's boobs? Much worse. For that, not only are there ways and means there's an entire search engine that some say could facilitate that. It's called Shodan, named after a people-hating computer in a 90s video game called System Shock. Shodan is a search tool for, in a sense, the internet you can't find on Google. Instead of content, it scans the web for connected servers, devices, and systems and lets you access information on them. Lots of everyday technologies that you might not really think of as being web devices are, in fact, connected to the internet traffic lights, heating and water systems, even power plants. Take a building security system. For you to be able to control that system from, say, your phone, it's basically connected to the cloud 24-7. The problem is many of these web-connected systems have very low security controls. A simple search for default password will prove this. Pro tip, don't use 1234 as your password. You are limited in how many searches you can do without a paid account, but it's still not hard to speculate how easily this information could be abused. In the popular press, Shodan has been described as a scary search engine. But today we talked to the site's founder about whether that characterization is really true and what he hopes the site can accomplish. Hey John, how's it going? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. So you are the founder of Shodan, which is a search engine for which has been around for actually a few years now. Um, why do you suppose it's getting so much attention right now? I think it's reached a point where people have been able to find stuff that's more interesting than just web servers. Because it took a while to kind of figure out how Shodan works. It's not like Google. It's not easy. You can't just type in, you know, power plant and you're going to get something. It actually takes a lot of expertise and knowledge to find what you're looking for. And a lot of people have put a lot of research into Shodan now to the point where they found interesting things. And I guess it finally reached mainstream to a certain degree. It's been described in, I guess, the popular press as kind of scary. And um, people seem to be frightened by what they see as... Um, you know, the potential for a site like this to access public, you know, public utilities, you know, traffic lights, um, all the things that you can find on this site. Is it scary or do you think people are misunderstanding what you're trying to do? I think they're actually not afraid of Shodan. I think they're afraid of what Shodan has exposed. Shodan is a tool. Shodan has, you know, it's like Google. You can use Google for hacking as well. So. The majority of my users are security researchers and pen testers. But what people are afraid of is that people were able to actually find power plants. I mean, the problem isn't yeah. Shodan. The problem is that people put power plants on the internet without authentication. Right. So and they put red light cameras. They're just surprised probably by how much of their environment is actually online and connected nowadays, which is probably a surprise. I didn't realize that these red light cameras were actually online and you could read the license plates as the cars drive through. So wow. I'm sure other people are similarly surprised. You brought this up a little bit a moment ago, but um, what types of, who, who, who is this most useful for? So it's very useful for people who do security research. I know it sounds a bit vague, I guess, but so a good example is I have customers, they write software like uh, that wants to fingerprint, kind of like antivirus, you want to fingerprint certain things. And if you need a big data set to create a training um, simulation for it, you can use Shodan for that. Uh, also, the U.S. government uses it because they use it to identify these power plants. Like before it even reaches the news, they get all the data from Shodan and they contact the network operators to hopefully get it shut down. And they send the data to other states around the world to kind of coordinate a lot of that. And uh, otherwise... Yeah, just research and seeing what's out there. People do actually use it nowadays to also see what software is out there, but that's not what makes news. So. so what are your thoughts on Shodan? As always, leave your questions or comments in the section below, and Scott and I will get to some of those this weekend. Or you can send us a video response and get your mug on our episode. Thanks for watching. This is Annie for TFN.